Hi, my name is Josh Oliver from Zanata Consulting. In today's video, I'm going to go over bidirectional syncs between lookup fields and subforms in Zoho Creator. By the end of this video, you should have a more advanced understanding of subforms and use them more effectively inside of your Zoho Creator projects. Please like and subscribe below. It really helps our channel. And if you have any questions, please put those in the comments and I'll be sure to respond. I hope you enjoy this video. So in our last video, I walked through how to create a standard subform in Zoho Creator and actually in my first video, so this is kind of a three-part series. In the first video, I showed creating a lookup field between two separate modules so that you can relate them just through a lookup field. Uh, the second video, which I did last week, was on how just a standard subform works and how that can create child records as well. And today, I am going to show you how we can combine both of those two options into a bi-directional relationship and we can create child records either through the subform or through a standalone form. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive on into it. In this form, you can see, and this is the, the same app that we've been working on. It's a task management app. In this form, you can see there is a subform and I have one row. But in my other module that I have that's actually housing the data, we have multiple rows. And all of these rows are actually related to the account. Let me just show you, let's, let's pull in another field here so we can see that. Oh, here it is. Oh, okay. It exists already. So you can see all of these rows exist related to that account. But if I go into the account record, the subform only shows one row. And that's because this one row was created in this record. Uh, so with a standard subform, again, those rows it have to be created within this form for them to show up and appear in the parent record. But again, you can see there are other records, other tasks that were created linked to this account. And we want to see all of those within this subform. And we can do that using a bidirectional relationship. To create a bidirectional relationship, we're going to start in the editor, the application editor, and I'm going to go to the account. We've added the tasks as a subform, and this is pulling in from an existing form, which is called tasks. What I want to do is I want to go into the tasks form now, and we want to set this lookup field to be bidirectional. Now, there is an option down here to just choose bidirectional, and then you could relate it to a specific user field. But I've never found this to actually work well to set it after the fact. I believe to make this work, you, we need to delete the account field. And then I guess that account field is listed in a, in a given block. So I need to remove that block first. So I think it's this one here. I'm just going to remove. Let's just remove both of these to clean it up. All right, so I'm going to remove that account lookup field. So if you already added the lookup field, you're going to have to remove it and then we'll re-add it. And I'm going to pull in from the account and say account name. Now that that form already exists as a subform, it's going to give you the option to set it up as a bidirectional relationship or bidirectional data sync. And we want to enable this. When we enable it, I'm going to choose the subform I want it to relate to which means if this subform exists in other modules, you're, you're going to have to choose the module you want it to relate to. So in this case, I'm going to link it to tasks and it's a single dropdown. So I'm going to click OK. And when, now that we've done that, we have created a bidirectional relationship and that's all we got to do. Now, whenever I go into our view, I can go into our account Notice the account name has been removed. Now in the subform, because it's a bidirectional relationship, I don't need to list the account name again. It's already been defined and we don't need to link that again. Any rows added to this subform will already exist linked to this account. So let's say I want to add another task, task, I don't know, six now, something like that. Uh, this one's open and give it a due date of the 25th. Update. We have two tasks added to this account. And if I go into tasks, I can see we have a bunch of tasks, but only two of these are actually linked to the account. I want all of these to be linked to the account. So let's just do a quick little mass update and we're going to choose that account. 
Now that all of these tasks are linked to the account, we can view all of those tasks in this subform. So now with the bidirectional relationship turned on, we can edit those tasks from either the subform or from the tasks module. But we can edit or add tasks. So if I wanted to add a task here and link it to Zanata, I can do that. And so now we have another task, task test eight, should probably standardize that naming convention. Uh, task eight is gonna exist in this subform. And that's all we have to do to create a bi-directional relationship. And this is the best of both worlds when it comes to using subforms or related tasks. If I wanted to show these related records inside of this detail view, I can do that as well. So I'm gonna go into the editor on this report, detail view, and then I'm gonna add a related block I could either choose a relationship to the subform or I could choose a relationship to the lookup form. Either is going to pull the same records. I generally like to pull it from the related records through a lookup field, which would be this one, relationship to this form. And the reason being is you get the little plus icon on the related list, so you can add records right from there. So I'm gonna add it here. And then if I click this account again, we can see all of those tasks linked here and I can add a row. The account gets defined here, so any record created through this is also going to appear inside of this subform. With bidirectional turned on, we are opening up more possibilities for workflow rules, because now we can either trigger a workflow rule on add of the row, or we could trigger a workflow rule on creation of the task. Both will work the same. All right, so that concludes our three-part series in subforms and related lists inside of Zoho Creator. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments. If you found this video useful, please like and subscribe, and that really helps out our channel. I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you next time.